serious lawyers what's a case you regretted winning i'm a work comp attorney now represent injured people but used to work on other side insurance defense there was an applicant with a serious injury fell off a ladder busted back with fusion shoulder fucked years of treatment internal issues psych issues really just fucked up 50% plus permanent disability we were 5 years in and finally getting to settlement time if we bought out his future medical settlement pretty far into six figures this guy was the sole provider for wife and two kids then we found out he had a aggressive brain cancer expected only couple years to live at best thus we wouldn't buy out future medical anymore still got permanent disability for $60,000 ish but can't give medical buyout based on 25 plus year life expectancy anymore i felt terrible for the guy and his family me and the adjuster tried to get insurance to agree to some sort of amount like 5 year buyout but the bean counters said hell no the attorney knew it wasn't me making the decision even though he worked on that guy's file for 5 plus years he decided to take 0 dollars in fees I have so much respect for that attorney turning down $10,000 plus in fees to help his client in a very shitty situation. I do family law and I represented a father who had lost most of his custody from heroin use and imprisonment as a result. He came to me saying he was clean and doing good and had his life together and it checked out. He had been clean for almost 9 months not counting jail time and seemed sincere in wanting to resume a full relationship with his son. The other side fought viciously to keep him at extremely little custody and supervised at that, but we prevailed and got an order restoring fairly frequent unsupervised partial custody. Not long afterwards, only about 3 months after the case, he was back doing heroin, sold most of his furniture, and for me the most soul crushing is that he set up a fake GoFundMe stuff for his child's cancer. His child didn't have cancer and has never had cancer, so you know where that money was going. I withdrew my appearance at this point so I don't know what happened afterwards but I imagine and hope his custody was taken away. Basically the net result of winning that case was that the poor boy had to witness his father relapse on heroin and was exploited for money. Worst case I ever won. Guy lost his wife and children in a car accident. He wanted to exercise to get his emotions and mental health back in check. Doctor wrote him recommendations for exercise equipment ball chin up bar nothing crazy and he submitted the expenses for same to his insurer client and insurer adjuster wanted this for tooth and nail because exercise equipment was only covered for physical rehab and he was not physically injured i do not practice in this area anymore i do juvenile work criminal law and family law I represented this client first when he was a juvenile charged with disorderly conduct at school and fighting then when he became an adult it for was for simple things like possession of marijuana as he got older it became easier and easier to figure out what part of his life hasn't gone as well as it could and I tried to counsel him and push him to better himself he got his GED he started going to NA he started classes at a community college and found a part-time job On the night of his 21st birthday, he was charged with a DWI. Of course, I'll take care of that too. About 6 months later, we are due in court for trial on a Monday and he doesn't show up, which at this point in his life is highly unusual. As I'm trying to figure out where he is, the court starts going over arraignments, first appearances and then lo and behold, three people are up for murder charges. The prosecution starts to tell the judge what the facts, circumstances of the case are and mentions a few victims' names. Apparently, my client was at a party when these 3 individuals decided to allegedly do a drive-by shooting. My client suffered multiple gunshot wounds and didn't make it to the hospital. So, by default, as you can't prosecute a dead person, the state has to take a dismissal. I guess technically a win. Either way, it was crushing to me as I thought he had really turned his life around. He had. Edit. Wow, this really blew up. Thanks for all the positive comments and the bling. Also, since some people asked for clarification or were confused. 1. I truly believe he was on the right path forward. 2. GED equals high school equivalency diploma 3. Na equals narcotics anonymous 4. DWI equals driving while impaired. I work in medical malpractice defense. Once I had a obstetrician gynecologist who burned a patient during a procedure. 
when I met with the doctor, he lied to me throughout the representation over 16 months saying he had no idea how it happened. There is a doctrine in law called res IPSA, meaning absent some sort of negligence, this accident could not have occurred. Woman came in without a burn, and after the procedure, the woman left with a burn. There's no way this doctor didn't know what had happened. The area of the burn was where he was operating on. It wasn't until I brought up settlement, because this was not a case we could win did he say, oh maybe I do know what happened. We ultimately settled that case, which is considered a favorable outcome considering the potential high monetary verdict. Sometimes I think this doctor really ought to have lost that case and their license. I wouldn't say I regret this so much as to this day it amazes me. As a first year associate I was given a terrible pie case where my client received a flu shot and thereafter felt pain in his shoulder. He went to another doctor who performed an MRI and determined he had a torn rotator cuff, which was undoubtedly not related. My job was to allege the flu shot caused the rotator cuff tear. Our ortho actually correlated the two, which is the more regrettable position, and the case paid out. Being the bottom of the totem pole I had no choice but to take the case, which was handed down by a partner. But at the same time, just overwhelmingly made me feel like the worst stereotyped attorney and just hated having to walk into court on it and feel my reputation being destroyed. In one of my first cases after passing the bar exam, a young man retained me on a drunk driving charge. No one was hurt, but he totaled his car. During trial, the arresting police officer testified that my client was clearly drunk at the accident scene, and that my client was loudly blaming the accident on the fucking asshole who stole his car, crashed it, and then fled before the cops arrived. However, according to two other witness statements tendered into evidence, it was my client's friend, the passenger, who was screaming about the asshole who stole the car, not my client, the driver. The cop must have confused the two men during his testimony. This discrepancy raised a reasonable doubt in the judge's mind, so she acquitted my client. At the time, the acquittal was somewhat unexpected for me, in my personal view, my client was clearly drunk and responsible for the accident, regardless of who was blaming the mystery asshole to the cops, but I was happy my young client got off, no one was hurt, and lessons were learned. And I was quite euphoric to have won my first criminal case. The regret? About a month after the acquittal, my young client called me at 3 a.m. from the police station saying, it's me again. The police arrested me for drunk driving again. Can you help me? Not only did I answer no, I instantly regretted getting the earlier acquittal. My client apparently didn't learn any lessons. As a personal injury attorney, I've seen a few clients win the blue collar lotto or getting more money than they reasonably know how to deal with. I do my best to educate them, but my job is to try and maximize their recovery, not teach them finance. I have definitely contributed to a few drug habits. Settled a personal injury case for a guy and he was set to get about $5,000. He was in jail. I held the money for a couple months and when he got out he came by to get the money without delay. The next day the cops came around and asked if I knew him. I explained that I did. I was told he died that night of an overdose and the only thing found on him was my card, some drugs he had not yet used, and a needle. Eviction law, basically every other case. Even the assholes. It's not rewarding to put people out on the curb. Ever. Consider subscribing, 